Thank you for choosing to worship with me today. It's a real privilege to be able to come to you in your homes and lead you through a sacred time in which we know God is present with us, wherever we are, physically, spiritually, or mentally. We're going to begin today by acknowledging the land, for as we gather, we remember that we live and work on Indigenous lands, May we work with Aboriginal, Métis, and Inuit peoples in seeking right relationships and preservation of the land, sea, and sky. We light this candle in the name of the Triune God who offers us forgiveness, love, and support when we gather for worship and throughout our lives. Let us listen now to our recorded introit number 381, Spirit of Life. We gather in the presence of God's spirit, the spirit of life and peace. The spirit offers promise to each new day. The spirit brings hope out of despair. The spirit enlivens our actions and the spirit leads us towards justice. Let us pray. Loving God, you live in us through the Spirit. We feel your holy wind upon our hearts as surely as the branches dance in the gentle breeze. Give us courage and strength to speak out against hatred and injustice, filling our sails to carry us forward. May we offer a bit of vulnerability and weakness so that others may find power and assurance as the winds of change sweep across our troubled world. Amen. I'm going to move on over to our chessboard here for our theme conversation. I've titled this conversation, A Sacrifice for You. And so I wanted to show you a chessboard set up as though someone has been playing a couple of moves. And here I've got a bishop who's in line to take the queen. But I would happily sacrifice my pawn so that then my queen or one of my other chess pieces might take the bishop. I do play a little bit of chess, but I'm not very good. So <laughs> if my moves were not correct, <laughs> just it's the symbolism that matters. 
because sometimes we have to sacrifice something, even something we really enjoy, so that others may get what they need. This is the dictionary definition of sacrifice. It's one, an act of surrendering a possession as an offering to God. Two, an act of giving up something valued for the sake of something else regarded as more important or worthy, for we must all be prepared to make sacrifices. Three, it's a chess move intended to allow the opponent to win a pawn or piece for strategic or tactical reasons. Four, in baseball, it's a bunted ball that puts the batter out but allows a base runner to advance. Or five, in bridge, it's a bid made in the belief that it will be less costly to be defeated in the contract than to allow the opponents to make a contract. An example of sacrifice, of course, is Christ's offering of himself in the crucifixion so that we might know God's great love. If we can sacrifice in chess or baseball or bridge, then why is it so hard to sacrifice when something really matters? Why do we struggle to sacrifice some of our comforts and privileges for racial justice and equality? Or we might turn things around a little bit and ask, what are we already sacrificing right now for the safety and health of others? What will we have to sacrifice in the future to heal our community, country, and world in these upcoming months and years? Every sacrifice that we make for someone else is an offering of faith to the risen Christ. So you might choose this week to play one of those games mentioned in the definition of sacrifice, to go out and play a little baseball or play a little bridge or enjoy a game of chess and think about the concept of sacrifice as you make your moves. We're going to now listen to the pre-recorded hymn number 391, God Reveal Your Presence.
Our first reading comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 18, verses 1 to 15. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mir, Mamur as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bow down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, Knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to a servant who, has, who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, there, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age, and it had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of woman. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, after I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, Oh yes, you did. Hear the word of God from ages past. May they reveal a timeless truth. And our second reading comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 9, verses 35 to chapter 10, verse 23. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanin, Canaanin, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, 
cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave the house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speaks, but the Spirit of the Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of your name, because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Hear the story of God's great love for us. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Healing God, help us to open ourselves to your call to aid others. Teach us how to sacrifice our own comfort and expectations to better serve the needs of our hurting world. Grant us vision, strength, and joy for this work. Amen. In this week's readings, we witness people called by God to perform marvelous acts. Things like giving birth in old age and curing the sick. Accepting these callings requires a willingness to sacrifice one's own comfort to serve God and others. The texts invite us to explore sacrifice in our own lives as we seek to live out God's call. I first learned about the WMS when I was preparing to be confirmed as a teenager and was asked to read a book about them. It was then, and still now for me, a great awe that I experience when I think of the sacrifices of women across our country in order to further the work of the church. In the days before Union and shortly afterwards, through the 1920s and 30s, in the, as a forerunner to the UCW, United Church women gathered across the country in auxiliary groups of the Women's Missionary Society. According to the United Church of Canada archives, this female-run branch of our denomination was created to supplement the existing home and foreign missionary societies and particularly focus on the work of women and the needs of children. And I quote, this included the employment and support of women teachers for mission schools 
and female medical workers, as well as the staffing, support, and supervision of institutions such as orphanages, school homes, residential schools, and social service homes, and other such mis mission work as was predominantly carried out among women and children. As well, many women were recruited and supported by the WMS for mission work overseas in Japan, China, and Africa. Though we now know that some of these missions contributed to racist systems of colonization in our country and led to multi-generational traumas, at the time, the WMS was trying to follow God's calling to love our neighbors and make sacrifices for the greater good. In addition to the women's auxiliary, the WMS also included mission circles for teenaged girls and baby band for children, which used a program focused on developing a missionary spirit. The WMS knew that many social programs and people were counting on them as they supported the needs of the most vulnerable, such as the sick, impoverished, and children. Therefore, these women would manage their household finances wisely and save money where they could so that they would have something to contribute to this important work. They cooked baked, sang, and held all sorts of fundraisers to meet their contribution goals. There is a great feeling of pride that fills my heart when I think of the things these women would have sacrificed in order to help someone that was struggling more than them. Like perhaps choosing to sew their own dress rather than go out and buy one cutting back on the grocery budget and relying more on what the garden would produce, bartering in order to get something that they needed so that they could save a little money to support others. It seems to me that we don't make sacrifices quite like that to support our food bank, hospital auxiliary, home and school, or a group home in our community, or similar organizations across our country anymore. Though I do have to say that our UCW, our United Church Women, remain the backbone of many of our congregations and are committed to keeping the doors of the church open. A big thank you to all of those women, past and present, that have taught us that sacrificing for others can give meaning for our lives and give us purpose as we try to live as Jesus lived. Let us spend some time this week contemplating the sacrifices of parents like Abraham and Sarah who had to rediscover themselves and give up routines and comforts in order to make room for a baby in their lives. Let us also think about those first 12 apostles and all that they had given up, first to follow Jesus and later to take up his ministry when he had risen and all that they would have faced, all the criticism, all the persecution, all the doubt that they may have had within themselves. How do we keep the faith in our midst? How do we have confidence in our calling as people of God and what are we willing to sacrifice in order to make that calling become a reality? I leave you with that thought today. Amen. 
We're going to listen now to a pre-recorded hymn number 594, O Christian Love. Let us come before the Lord our God in prayer this day. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the ways that you have called your people for eons, that you have given us a vision within our hearts of your will for us, and that you constantly offer us opportunities to make your kingdom here on earth. We thank you for the great wisdom and example of our forefathers and foremothers as they did their best to live lives of faith. And we thank you for the ways that we have been able to change and grow, not just as individuals, but as humankind. That we can continually develop into more compassionate and loving societies. For our world is better now than it was a hundred years ago or a thousand years ago. Continue to build within us a sense of hope and encouragement and confidence that we may continue to live your calling and make the sacrifices necessary to build your kingdom. Not just amongst humanity, but amongst all of creation, that we might all live in harmony and peace.
bind these prayers with those said in the silence of our hearts and minds as we join in saying together the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our closing hymn is number 560, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. <coughs> into the world, prepared to catch a glimpse of Jesus in your midst, and prepared to let others catch a glimpse of Jesus in you. Amen. <laughs>